Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending March 31st, and this will be posted on April 1st, which, as you know, is April Fool's Day. Be aware, there's amateurs out there playing pranks, so be careful. First story. This comes from Desmosa DC Alice. Thank you, he's become a semi-regular contributor, and that helps out a lot, especially during the weeks where the stories are running a little bit slow, and I love when my listeners and viewers give me some extra stories to use. This is from MSNBC, is your TV watching you? Latest models raise concerns. They're focusing on this article. It's kind of a blog format written by Gary Merson, and they're focusing on the Samsung smart TV that has a built-in webcam and microphone, but I think eventually this is going to apply to pretty much all the smart TVs. Uh, they're producing this for so that they can give you a an experience for each individual person. It has face recognition, so if it sees you're sitting in front of the television set, uh, however you have it set up for your preferences, your channels, your TV shows that you like, or I guess even games you want to play. But this is more or less just focusing on the privacy concerns of having a webcam and a microphone turned on with your TV set. Now, Samsung did answer this in a reply later, although he didn't in this article say they gave him a reply, but later on they did. And they did say that the camera itself can be turned away. You can actually face it away so that it's not looking at anybody in the room. But as far as turning the microphone off, that's a software setting, so there's no physical way you can take a switch and actually disable the microphone for sure. I think anything with a software turn off can also be turned on again in software, depending on um, who has access or who knows, maybe in the future your smart television sets will need an antivirus uh, software to go along with it too. Uh, there's a lot of features that can be useful. I mean, how many people leave their computer with a camera, you know, where it could be engaged without without knowing it. So if you do have the privacy concerns, be careful from now on what TV sets you purchase and what features they have. And uh, if you're not sure, be sure and ask. And if they can't give you a satisfactory answer of if can I actually physically and hardware turn off the microphone and the television set, then either don't purchase it or purchase another television set that doesn't have those features best I could tell you about that but check out this article as usual all the links to all the articles will be below in the description this next article I've been following for years because being a not a super gardener but I do like to garden on occasionally and I also notice being that my backyard is full of clover uh, I used to like to see the honeybees come and pollinate the clover but now you just you don't see honeybees you see bumblebees you see sweat bees but um, this is a, a study that's just come out, and this was talked about in guardian.co.uk, pesticides linked to honeybee decline. Now, there have been lots of studies like this before, but these latest two studies done in France and Scotland talk about the fact that um, some of the studies, when they do lab studies of the bees, they're done in a, a rather small environment, a small enclosed environment, and some of these bees that are slightly disabled by the pesticide effect don't have much trouble navigating um, a meter or so from the nectar source back to the colony but when you put them out on field trials to where they have to travel for maybe a quarter of a mile or longer distances like that a uh, sickly bee does not always make it back to the hive and sometimes even a third of the bees end up going out searching for pollen and uh, don't end up coming back the other fascinating thing about this too is a, a thing called there's a, a pesticide that's applied to seeds called the neo uh, let me see if I can get this right. It's a neonicotinoid, I think it's called. And they applied it to the seeds so that there would be less need of actually spraying and, and applying harmful chemicals to plants, which was thought to be a very good idea. But evidently, this uh, chemical actually gets into the pollen of the plants and the uh, bees ingest it. And it's not only the fact that a lot of the bees disappear, um, the other thing that contributes to the colony collapse disorder is the fact that these colonies have a 85% to a 0% rate of produce, 85% less or 0% rate of producing new queen bees. And especially for those in the temperate regions, you pretty much need the queen bees to survive till the winter time. So if uh, this uh, new type of pesticide is causing a, co uh, a not, that, not being able to produce queen bees, basically the whole colony is after the season, the colony is pretty much done for. So if you get a chance to check this out. And my third article, this was given to me by 1954 Shadow. Thank you, Bob, for this article. Farmers abandoning hundreds of donkeys due to severe drought. This is happening in the Louisiana and the Texas area. 
uh, I, I was not even aware of this myself, but a lot of cattle ranchers keep adult female donkeys around to guard the cattle. Anything that's dog-like, a fox, a wolf, a coyote, anything that's dog-like at all, these female donkeys get very aggressive and will chase after it and chase it away from the cattle. Well, since hay prices have jumped from $90 a ton to $290 a ton, the farmers have pretty much sold off their cattle because with the drought and everything, they're just there's no pastures to feed them. And meanwhile, you have these donkeys staying around, and all they do is eat but don't actually produce any income. So a lot of the farmers are just basically abandoning them. They're just leaving them by the side of the road, letting them wander out in fields, things like that. So the uh, different donkey rescues are being overwhelmed with these things. As a matter of fact, they won't even take them at auction anymore. This one guy in the article states that he took a pair of them to an auction and asked for a beginning bid of $5 and didn't even get a $5 bid for these donkeys. The particular hard ones to get a, give away are the ones that are uh, the male ones, the non-castrated males. Evidently, it's very expensive compared even to a horse to castrate a male donkey, and these things are very naturally aggressive and not quite so good to be around cattle, so they don't use the males, I guess, to guard the cattle so much as they use the adult females. So, Yeah, it would be nice if somebody could take on some of these. Or They said the drought is actually over with this year, but it's going to take some time to recover, so maybe in the next year or two in the Texas, Louisiana area, these uh, farmers will have a need for these things, and they will find homes for them. So anyway, next up, my friend Mick also known as Shifty is his nickname, is joining me this week from Down Under. He has a new channel, Bugsplat TV, and he's moving his old channel, Salacious Shadow, to Bugsplat TV, so you have to catch him there now on his new Bugsplat TV channel. And he's issuing a challenge. He's the world champion hammer spinner for 36 years running. So I want you to check out his latest video. That'll be posted down in the link below. So take it away, Mick. Thanks, Chuck, and good eye, everyone. Well, it's great to be back on the TDD report, and this week I bring you a story about... Okay, Chuck's not listening right now. He never pays attention to anything I do. So, viewers, are you fed up with the same boring old geeky science stuff that Chuck posts week after week? Yeah? Are you fed up with writing all those long-winded complaints that Chuck never addresses anyway? Hey, I'm hearing you. Well... I've got just the thing for you. Be the first on your street to have your very own Suburban Rider Voodoo Doll. Yeah, that's right. Let Chuck know instantly your displeasure and stick it to him right where it hurts. So, to order your Voodoo Doll today, just send $50 cash to Suburban Rider Voodoo Doll, Post Office Box 666, Race View Mail Centre, Queensland, Australia, 4305. And postage is included in the price. So, order yours today and avoid the Christmas rush. Oh, and you Americans, make that $50 Australian because $50 US wouldn't buy a packet of gum here in Australia. Well, that's all from me this week. Back to you, Chuck. Thanks, Mick. That's it for this week's TDD report. Thanks, everybody, and I will catch you next week. Okay, now to get this thing edited. Probably should have watched Mick's report. Nah, probably just more kangaroos and boomerangs. <laughs>